Welcome back, Grade 10 Mindsetters. So I just want to recap you because not a lot of you are talking to us on the page and we're feeling very lonely, right? We are, guys. Very sad. And especially, we've brought the beautiful Megan here. <laughs> so we need to talk to Megan and me on those geography questions. Megan? Yes, exactly. So I'm just going to tell you the Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra with an X. So that's where to find us. And don't forget the challenge question that we put in the beginning. And I'm still trying to figure out the answer. So back to you, come on. Go now come on, guys. <laughs> you can't let Megan answer that question alone. You've got to try as well. So as we've indicated from previous shows and just before the break, today we'll be working on a full on cal calculation for the magnetic bearing. Now get ready, follow each step and make sure you write these steps down because that's the best way to ensure that you remember crucial aspects that you need to extract from the map. Let's go forward. So my question today is as follows. And let's get our oh, pink ready. Calculate the magnetic bearing of Trig Beacon 44, which is in block E7, from Trig Beacon 151, which is in block D5, for the present year. Very crucial information. In fact, I'm going to circle that in green so that you remember that when we're calculating the magnetic bearing, the question is always going to determine the amount of information that you need to include. Present year, meaning this year, which is 2014, becomes crucial in our calculation. Let's go forward and we've extracted marginal information from the map. Let's look at this information. As I've extracted it from the map, it reads as follows. Mean magnetic declination, which is 21,5 degrees. There was a lot of questions last week to ensure that you understand that the five is not minutes. The five is a part of a degree. And as I've indicated to you before, any figure after the comma must be multiplied by six in order to ensure that you convert it to its rightful degrees and minutes. And remember, this is always west of true north. Essential to this calculation is the year on the map, which in this example is 2003. Note the following. The mean annual change is two minutes westwards. And our golden rule still applies. When it's westwards, we add. When it's eastwards, we subtract. In this particular map, it is westwards. So you should know that we're going to add in that step of magnetic declination. Let's go to the map and calculate the true bearing. Now, on this map, we've provided the extract for you. And you should note that in my question, a particular from point was determined between the two points. Now, let's go step by step to calculate the true bearing, grade 10s. Understand it as follows. Going back to the question, the question reads as follows. And I'm going to get a different color pen here. Off Trig Beacon 44 from Trig Beacon 151. The first step in true bearing is to determine what is my from point. And according to the question, my from point is Trig Beacon 151. What do I do at the from point? Let's go back to the map. So I've identified the two points on my map. And I draw, let's get a good color here in green, a straight line through the from point like such. Now remember, the other point is Trig Beacon 44. And from the from point to Trig Beacon 44, I will draw a straight line. So in my true bearing calculation, my step one is to go back to the question and determine what is my from point. I have two points in this question, Trig Beacon 151 and Trig Beacon 44. In my question, it reads from Trig Beacon 151. What do I do at the front point? I draw a straight line, which is called your true north line, at the front point, which is my line in green. My step two, I draw a line joining the two points. Now, simply, guys, all you have to do here on after is measure the angle. 
And that angle is to the east of the true north line. Note, this, is, this direction is to the east of the true north line. This direction is to the west of the true north line. What is our rule for true bearing? If the other point, which in this case is Trig Beacon 44, is to the east of the true north line, my angle will be less than 180 degrees. If the other point, if we had drawn the line to the west of the true north line, my angle would be greater than 180 degrees. In this example, remember, the line is drawn to the east. So my angle has to be less than 180 degrees, which is here. Now note, I've measured the angle already. So my true bearing, is equal to 135 degrees. And my direction of that true bearing is southeast. And this would afford you two marks, one for the angle and one for the direction. Remember, step one, determine which is your front point, which in this case is my trig beacon 151. Step two, draw a straight line or a true north line at the front point. Step three, draw a line from your front point to the other point. And then simply step four, measure the angle, which in this example is 135 degrees southeast. Now for the magnetic declination. And I'm gonna write this out in green for you. Magnetic declination. Now, Follow the following steps and you will get an accurate answer. My first step is the number of years. When I think about my question, guys, remember the question read, calculate the magnetic bearing for the present year. And our year, I hope you all in this year, is 2014. And what was the year on the map? 2003. So to calculate the number of years, I take the present year, which is 2014, and subtract it from the year on the map, which is 2003. When subtracted, my answer is 11 years. And this is the difference in years on the map. Let's go further. Now, once I've established my number of years, I can calculate the total change on the map and to do this i take my number of years which is 11 years and multiply it by the mean annual change let's go back to check that information on the map and in this case remember it was two minutes westwards so let's go back to our answer 11 years times two minutes. And this would give us an answer of 22 minutes. And now guys, I've always indicated this to you and I'm gonna repeat it. Whenever I'm calculating the total change, you've gotta ask yourself, how many times does 60 go into my years per minute? In this example, we've got 22 years per minute. How many times does 60 go into 22? Remember, I'm converting to degrees and minutes. So my correct answer is zero degrees and 22 minutes. And this then affords me now to calculate my magnetic declination. So magnetic declination equals. Now, guys, remember, this is the step where we're going to use our golden rule of eastward subtract, westwards add. And in this example, we need to find the mean magnetic declination, which is information on the map. So let's look at it. And this information was given to us already, and it's given to us as 21 degrees and comma five. 21 comma five degrees. So I go to the step, and remember, 
I substituted into my formula there, 21,5 degrees. Am I adding or subtracting? Let's write it there in green. I'm adding. Why? Because my mean annual change is westwards. What do I add it to? I add it to my total change. Zero degrees and 22 minutes is equal to, and let's go further down. Let's extend the page a bit. Right. Now, this step. Whenever there's a figure after the comma, I must multiply that figure by 6. So 21 degrees and 5 times 6 is 30 minutes. Note, 21 degrees, 30 minutes is the same as saying 21,5 degrees. All I've done is taken the figure after the comma and multiplied by 6 plus 0 degrees and 20 two minutes my answer let's write that down in a different color 21 degrees plus zero degrees is equal to 21 degrees 30 plus 22 is equal to 52 minutes and remember my answer for the magnetic declination is always west west of true north now I've calculated my true bearing and I've calculated my magnetic declination. I can now write down my formula for magnetic bearing. So my formula will read as follows. Magnetic bearing is equal to true bearing plus magnetic declination. Remember, this is a standardized formula. You can only add, you cannot subtract when you're calculating your magnetic bearing. So always note the formula, remember it. Magnetic bearing is equal to true bearing plus magnetic declination. I'm going to substitute into my formula. And in this case, my true bearing was 100 and 35 degrees plus remember my magnetic declination was let's just go back to that 21 degrees and 52 minutes 21 degrees and 52 minutes in this example 135 degrees plus 21 degrees is 156 degrees and 52 minutes and guys, this is how I calculate my magnetic bearing. Let's go on to the next one. The next one is a simple one on rough cross sections. Now remember, in grade 10, you will not be asked to draw an accurate cross section. Your task is always to draw a rough cross section. I've taken out an extract of the map in order for you to understand this. Draw a rough cross section to suggest the shape of the landscape from the diggings in B6 to the spot height in 1, 4, 5, 6. So the first step is to draw a straight line between the two points. Note there's my diggings and there is my spot height. Now, once you've established the two points, you should note that from the diggings, to spot height one, four, five, six, the shape of the land is as follows. We'll be drawing it from that point, which is the diggings, to the spot height. Note how the slopes are. As we rise and then we reach your pointed butte or conical hill at one, four, one, nine, then the landscape decreases and then increases again to one, four, five, six. Note, at times, you may be asked to interpolate or put in different features on the map. Like, for example, at that point, there is a track and hiking trail. On either side of the track and hiking trail, there are non-perennial rivers, not forgetting the diggings. So, guys, that is what we have for you today in terms of map analysis and interpretation. Key to this is to ensure that you understand that 
studying and understanding your reference or your conventional symbols is going to help you interpret better. Now, I'm going to call in Megan here. Oh Megan, no. yes? did you get the answer to the challenge question? I unfortunately Googled and Googled and I couldn't. I'm so sorry. Come on. Ugh, Megan. <sighs> but it's so easy. Guys, those of you always traveling on planes mm -hmm. and never stop to think, why does this plane land in a specific way? Let's go back to our challenge question. The challenge question read as follows. Why do the main runways at Cape Town International Airport face southeast and northwest? The reason I ask this question, remember, on many topographical maps, you're going to get points like airfields, or air landings, and these are smaller types of airports, but the principle remains the same. All airports are designed according to the variable winds that exist in that particular area. So, for Cape Town International, the prevailing winds are the southeasters as well as your northwesterlies. Let's look at the answer. And click there, and Note the following, Megan, this one's for you, <laughs> right? The orientation, let's get some green in there, of runways. Remember the word orientation. How do we align the airfield or the runways in the airport? Of runways at an airport are always determined by the prevailing wind. An aeroplane or an aircraft takes off and lands into the wind. Remember, you cannot land or take off according to the crosswinds. Shoo! Then the plane will go like that. No, all airplanes take off and land into the wind. And generally, the nature of airports are such that the winds are generally occurring in the same direction. So for Cape Townians and your Cape Town International Airport, the prevailing winds are always your southeasters as well as your northwesterlies. The most common winds in this area are the southeasters and the northwesterlies. And with that, guys, that comes to the end of the show. But before I hand over to Megan, Good luck for your exams, and we hope to see you next year in grade 11 and then for the grade 12 shows. All the best, guys. Good luck for your exam. Megan, Thank you, Kamala. Awesome. Thank you, grade 10s. It's been a fantastic show. I know it's wet and rainy unless it's shiny there by you. But I just want to say thank you to Macmillan for proudly sponsoring our great, great geography show and also endorsed by the Department of Basic Education. So thank you very much. It's been fantastic being with you again. Good luck and all the best for your exams. We're holding thumbs for you. I know we are. And I hope that you have a fantastic evening. Lots of love from me to you. Cheers, guys. Bye.